We are going to ask you to suspend your disbelief for the duration of this video. We'll be leaving planet Earth, traveling through time and taking you beyond the boundaries of what seems plausible and rational. It's going to be a wild ride, so make sure you're sitting comfortably and you've opened your mind as wide as it will go, and we'll begin. Let's start not at home on Earth, but on the surface of our planetary neighbor Mars. There, in 2012, the NASA rover Curiosity finally resolved a long-standing question. The question was, is there or was there ever water on Mars? And the answer is a definite yes. In October of that year, Curiosity found an ancient stream bed so deep that the water which once ran in it would have reached the hip of an average-sized human. The giveaway that this is a stream bed comes from the large rounded rocks in the stream bed. They could only have been carried here by water, and their rounded shape was caused by water flowing across them over millions of years. Geologists are confident that this would have been a fast-flowing stream, with water moving at a speed of around 3 feet per second. Almost every current scientific theory says that it's extremely difficult for life to exist anywhere without water. We now know for sure that there was water on Mars. So, was there also life? Could there even still be life on the red planet somewhere? Hopefully, we'll discover the answer within our lifetime. 2012 may have been the first time NASA found evidence of water on Mars, but since then, they've found it many times. Here are some truly stunning composite images of water ice just beneath the Martian surface. The important thing about subterranean water ice, from the point of view of scientists, is that it ought to be clean. This water could become drinking water for people living in a future Martian colony, or perhaps even as an ingredient for rocket fuel. In some of the places identified by scientists, the Martian water supply is barely an inch beneath the red surface. That's so close that you wouldn't even need a drill to access the water. All you'd need is a shovel. NASA and other space agencies are currently creating maps of known or highly probable water locations on the Martian surface because they are good potential landing spots for future missions to Mars. Having a reliable supply of water is likely to be the difference between life and death for the first humans to land there. So it's to be hoped that the experts are certain that all of these sites contain water and not some other non-drinkable liquid. We'll reluctantly move on from Mars now, but not without taking a look at some of the latest and greatest images of the planet's surface. In 2021, the Chinese National Space Administration successfully landed a spaceship on Mars and deployed its Zharong rover. It landed in an enormous lava plain called Utopia Planitia and is tasked with finding signs of ancient life. It hasn't found any yet, but it's obvious that its cameras are in perfect working order. These photos are beautiful. The Chinese space agency is normally secretive about its operations, so it's a rare treat that they decided to share these images with the world. Whether or not they'd let the rest of the world know if they did find signs of life is another matter, but at least we can enjoy these high-quality images while we're waiting to hear further news. The initial expectation of Xirong is that it would remain viable for only 90 days after arriving on Mars in May 2021, but it's still functioning as of the beginning of March 2022. It should still be running on the first anniversary of its landing and may even go on long beyond that. Who or what was the Blackbird of Chernobyl, sometimes also known as the Mothman of Chernobyl? Many workers at the site claim to have seen an unexplained object in the sky immediately prior to the 1986 nuclear disaster, and some even claim to have taken pictures of it. Descriptions of the object provided by the supposed eyewitnesses are all similar when it comes to details. They say that they saw a creature with large wings and two legs, almost as if it were a person. Some of them claim that the figure had no head, but there seems to be a head in these allegedly genuine photographs. According to conspiracy theorists, the creature in the pictures is similar to a legendary figure known as Mothman. Mothman was a pop culture phenomenon in the United States of America between 1966 and 1967, 
appearing for the final time before the sudden and unexpected collapse of the Silver Bridge, resulting in the loss of 46 lives. Who or what is the Blackbird of Chernobyl? Is it a shared hallucination, a harbinger of doom, or something else entirely? Asuka in Japan is the next stop on our journey. It's a place full of huge, megalithic stone structures, which have stood in place for centuries. They were clearly carved and arranged in their current form for a specific purpose, but nobody knows what that purpose is. There is speculation that they may have been sacrificial altars, or platforms upon which people watched and worshipped the stars, but they're just guesses. Most impressive of them all is Sakafune Ishi, which is covered in complicated markings and engravings. Also worthy of note is Masuda Iwafune, which is 11 meters long and nearly 5 meters high, and seems to have been carved out of a lump of pure granite. The granite is so thick that even modern technology would struggle to scratch the surface. So how was it carved and shaped 2,500 years ago? Locals believe it was the work of the gods, and are so wary of them that they won't even touch them. Tales of alien visitation and strange lights in the sky are common in this part of Japan. Might there be a connection between those stories and the strange nature of whatever happened to these rocks? Debate still rages today in Scotland about the origin and purpose of the tiny coffins found buried on Arthur's seat almost 200 years ago. Are they evidence of black magic, a tribute to lost relatives, or a harmless prank? The 17 miniature caskets were found by schoolboys on the slopes of the extinct volcano near Edinburgh while they were out hunting for rabbits in the summer of 1836. Someone had gone to great trouble to create and arrange them. They're all hand-carved from pine wood, all contain a tiny wooden body, and were arranged carefully in two rows of eight, with the 17th figure balanced on top, separated by a piece of slate. Sadly, some of the coffins have been lost over the years, so by the time they arrived at the National Museum of Scotland in 1901, only eight of them remained. At the time of their discovery, it was feared that they were voodoo dolls used in witchcraft, but that seems unlikely. Could there be a connection between the facts that there were 17 of them originally, and that Burke and Hare, who were active at the time, claimed 17 victims? It's possible! The Loch Ness Monster probably doesn't exist and probably never did. But where did all of those stories and legends come from? Scientists tried to find an answer to that question in September 2019 by performing a full DNA study of every living species in the lake. They found no sign of any giant species living underwater, nor any evidence that would support the unlikely existence of a plesiosaur. However, they did come up with a theory. The scientists, led by Professor Neil Gemmel, think that the original Nessie sightings might actually have been sightings of an enormous eel. Eels from the Bahamas frequently arrive in Scotland's rivers after completing a 3,000-mile journey from the Sargasso Sea and lay eggs upon their arrival. The eels that live in Loch Ness today aren't giants but that doesn't mean that there weren't giant eels here many years ago. Nor does it mean that there won't be giant eels there again in years to come. The DNA survey also turned up positive matches for deer, badgers, birds, cattle, sheep, and disturbingly humans. That suggests there are human remains in the water. The tales of Italian geologist Angelo Pitoni are probably too wild to be taken seriously. Pitoni claimed to have direct evidence of aliens visiting Earth, and in evidence, he presented a collection of rocks that he claimed couldn't have originated on our home planet. Even if he's exaggerating, though, his beautiful blue sky stone is a mystery that can't be explained away. Pitoni claims to have found the stone in Sierra Leone in 1990, and it's been a puzzle ever since. The stone doesn't have any properties that explain its blue shade but that's the least of the problems with it from a scientific point of view. Testing has shown that it's composed of 77% oxygen, which ought to be impossible, with the rest of the rock made of calcium, carbon, 
and another element that can't be identified. It also appears to be unbreakable. Scientists at the University of Utrecht in the Netherlands heated it to 3,000 degrees Celsius and recorded no changes to the stone at all. Pouring acid on it is said to leave no marks. Unfortunately, the Pitoni Sky Stone vanished after Pitoni passed away in 2009, so further study of it is now impossible. The only thing we can say with any certainty about Ohio's Great Serpent Mound is that it's in Peebles, and it's the world's largest earthwork effigy with a total length of 1,330 feet. Anything beyond that is speculation and educated guesswork. The most widely believed of those educated guesses is that the Adena people built the three-foot-high serpent, but that seems to clash with scientific evidence. The Adena lived on these lands 3,000 years ago, but disappeared just over 2,000 years ago. Samples of charcoal taken from the mound suggest that it's only 1,000 years old. That was the time when the Fort Ancient Civilization lived here, but they didn't make anything else like this that we're aware of. Researchers and experts can't even agree on what the serpent is supposed to represent. Some of them believe that it's in the process of swallowing an egg and may have fertility implications, whereas others say the sphere close to its mouth represents the moon. We think there's a bigger question than that, though. How did these ancient people create a cohesive work of art like this when it would have been impossible to even see what they were doing from ground level? Australia is a country that was formed by British colonists, but was inhabited by humans long before the British arrived. Aborigines lived in Australia as long as 4,000 years ago, and they created the Wangina rock art that can be found across the Kimberley region of the country. The Wangina, also known as Gulingi, are Australian Aboriginal mythology's cloud and rain spirits. They're linked to Wangur, a rainbow snake thought to be the creator of all life on Earth by several Aboriginal tribes. Because this portion of Australia was emerging from a drought that had lasted almost a thousand years when these paintings were produced, rain spirits were extremely important to these early Aboriginals. When the drought eventually ended, persistent monsoons took their place. These people must have thought the sudden arrival of so much rain was a miracle which explains their intense loyalty to these mythological figures. The living descendants of these tribes hold them in such high regard that they are still repainted every year. The origins of the snake creator theory, though, are unknown even to them. Our next mysterious site is known by many names, including Zorats Karer and Karahunj. However, it's better known by its nickname, which is the Armenian Stonehenge. In truth, though, it doesn't look much like Stonehenge. In form and appearance, Karahunj in Sisian is a ring-shaped arrangement of meniers, with holes drilled into them. Archaeologists and historians have speculated that this may have been a prehistoric astronomical observatory, but that's little more than a best guess. Far more evidence would be required to support such an assertion. There are 223 standing stones at the site which is thought to have been erected in either the Iron Age or the Middle Bronze Age several thousand years ago. While the observatory theory is the most popular among experts, there's a less well-regarded theory that Karahunj is actually all that remains of the walls of an ancient Armenian city that once existed here. There's no sign of an ancient settlement in the surrounding area, though, so that seems to be a far-flung hope. Whoever created the Armenian Stonehenge chose a stunning hilltop setting for their work, but we might never understand why they did it. You either believe in the ancient astronaut hypothesis or you don't. Either you find the thought of people from outer space or the future visiting our ancient ancestors thousands of years ago fascinating, or you think it's absurd. If you're inclined to believe in it, though, you'll undoubtedly refer to evidence such as the Tassili Najer cave art in Algeria as part of the Sahara Desert. The drawings are extraordinarily intricate, undeniably ancient, and appear to depict humanoid entities dressed in suits, gloves, and helmets similar to those used by astronauts today. The paintings date back at least 10,000 years, but they could be as old as 15,000. 
Everything else on the walls of the caverns, from animals to mountains and rivers, appears to have been inspired by things the artists would have seen in their daily lives. Where did they acquire the idea for these astronaut figures if all they painted were the sights around them? Whether you believe they are evidence of alien visitation to Earth in the past or not, you have to admit that they are amazing, perplexing works of cave art. Subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell, and enjoy watching new videos on my channel. Thanks for watching and see you soon!